HCS Connects. I'm Kelly Goral with Hampton City Schools. We have an exciting show ahead of us today as we get to dive deeper into the Governor's Health Sciences Academy at Bethel High School. So with me today I have Dorothy Garrity who is the Academy Principal over the Governor's Health Sciences Academy as well as Chloe Howell who is a 10th grader at Bethel. So welcome to HCS Connects. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Well, we're so excited. As we know Hampton has been transforming what teaching and learning looks like in the city of Hampton with Hampton City Schools and with our academies of Hampton. We have 16 wall-to-wall -wall academies throughout our four high schools, but we don't ever have the opportunity on this show to really dive deeper into what does that look like in a specific academy. So Dorothy, we have you here. Tell us an overview of the Governor's Health Sciences Academy. The Governor's Health Sciences Academy started uh, as a pocket academy before we went to the wall-to-wall -wall academy transformation. And what does pocket academy mean? When we originally started, it was the only academy at Bethel High School, and we were able to select students based on attendance, academics, and behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and then now we go through the regular academy selection process to re receive our students from Bethel and from the other three high schools. Okay. It is the oldest academy um, in Hampton. It is also the largest academy. Next year, we will have approximately 500 students. Wow. Uh, that will take classes in four different pathways. When you say four different pathways, so you've got the academy and then you've got the pathways underneath, what are those four pathways? The four pathways that we have are diagnostics, therapeutic, health informatics, bio, biomedical technology and research. <laughs> and our students are taking those, correct? Yes, they are. <laughs> That's amazing. So <laughs> explain a little bit more about each of those pathways. What are they learning in those pathways? In the diagnostics pathway, they're learning uh, what nurses and doctors would be learning, how to diagnose patients. They look at the patient overall health, information that the patient supplies, and then they would look at how to diagnose that particular um, disease or ailment that they have, and then prescribe a plan of action. Therapeutic is um, focused more on our sports medicine pathway, and that's where students are able to learn how to be a sports trainer. Okay. And they are, the therapeutic side of it is how they assess injuries and treat inju injuries, especially for our, our athletes. The health informatics side or pathway is for the medical billing and patient record keeping side of medical um, health care and that's our students are learning now um, how to greet patients they're learning how to protect their information they're learning how to store records and they are also working on a, a machine that we have called sim rx and that is where they enter patient information and they track that patient's care over a period of time including diagnostic testing as well as medication and treatment the last one is the biomedical technology and research and that's for our students that really like the research side of medicine they go through and they make sure that um, they're looking at every angle of a disease or every angle of a healthcare issue and researching it, finding cures for diseases or new ways to treat diseases. So they're all really exceptional pathways for our students. And our students really have to use some critical thinking skills. I am so impressed every time we talk about all of our academies and we really dive down into the different pathways and what our students are learning. I mean, we're talking about, you know, what, a ninth grader is 14, where they're trying to make their decision on what pathway, and then you're talking 10th, 11th, and the next year are 12th graders that will be wall to wall. Did you ever learn stuff like this when you were in high school? Not to this extent. <laughs> I mean, I took biology and we dissected Chemistry, frogs. Chemistry, biology, dissected some frogs, yes, maybe but, a rat. But. <laughs> Nothing to this extent. I mean, they really do get to get more in depth in their classes and a lot more hands on with what they're learning. That is just exceptional. Well, um, we went skiing a few weeks ago with a family trip and I fell. I should have come in for the sports medicine because I took a nice spill on my knee. So next time I'll just come <laughs> over to Bethel instead of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They'll give you some exercises to do and tape you up. There you go. Well, Chloe, which pathway are you a part of at Bethel? I'm a part of the diagnostic services pathway and that pathway like she said is geared towards your doctors, your physicians, your nurses. Um, I aspire to be an OBGYN or a midwife. I take intro to health occupations right now. That's where we learn our clinical skills, we learn our cert skills, we get a lot of certifications, CPR, so I'm very excited and happy to be a part of that. 
Well, that is exciting. So what kind of experiences have you had through that pathway? So since we learn our clinical skills, we learn how to do our diagnostic testing, like height and weight, hearing testing, those simple things that you wouldn't think about. So we actually have gone to Kikatan and done health screenings on the other sophomores, and that was my favorite thing. <laughs> um, we've been to many different colleges. We've been to the Riverside Health Careers College. We've been to the Hampton University Proton Institute. That was actually really cool. Um, so we do have a lot of opportunities, and not just for my grade, but for the juniors and the freshmen also. Well, and, and you're a sophomore. Yes. You're a 10th grader. So, you know, that's the opportunities. You've just had your 10th grade year. Yes. I mean, think about just the next two years, by your junior and senior year, the, you know, what's in reach that you're going to be experiencing, having hands-on, and going out of the classroom with those opportunities. Yeah. Now, you mentioned these different places, and we know that we've got great business partners with the Academies of Hampton. I believe at this point we're over 400 business partners and community partners. So tell us a little bit about the business partners that are really there with the Governor's Health Sciences Academy. Well, of course, the majority of our partners are health-related um, providers. We are partners with Sentara Medical Group, Sentara Careplex Hospital, Riverside Health Careers. Uh, we have Orthopedic Spine Center, and they have provided some wonderful opportunities for our students. We are also partnered with uh, Hampton University, Thomas Nelson, New Horizons, wow. Luxor Eyes, um, Pariser Dermatology. So you can see there's a wide range of partners that give access to our students for different fields in, in healthcare. Well, I'm impressed with the partners, but I'm almost equally impressed that you can remember all of them. I don't think I could <laughs> sit there and remember all of those partners because that is a huge amount of partners. It is, and we're fortunate that we have that many partners to provide experiences for our students. We've got a wealth within Hampton and within the region to pull from. Yes, we do. So, Chloe, now looking at, you know, you've said you've had these opportunities mm -hmm. and we talk about these business partners. I mean, what, tell me, like, how does that help you as far as your career down the road, do you think? Well, I did get the opportunity to go to the Proton Therapy Institute and I met the founder and he did make a little note, so hopefully I can get an internship with him. But that's a really good thing. You learn about different work studies, you can get those internships. So when you do go to college, you come in with that experience and you have the opportunity to figure out exactly what you wanna do so you don't switch your majors while yeah. you're in college. I mean, you've got your foot in the door potentially. Yes. As a sophomore and then, you know, as you're becoming a junior and senior and those internships and external opportunities and challenge-based learning to really like figure out what you want to do and meet people and how to do it yeah. and how to do it so you mentioned certifications yes and you said CPR AED I'm familiar with CPR AED mm -hmm. but what are some of the other certifications that you are going for well next year I'll begin my certified nursing assistant certifications in my senior year I'll get my pharmacy tech certification so explain those a little bit more so you have the opportunity to take those classes at New Horizons so um, the certified nursing assistants um, course is an entire year and at the end you'll take your certification exam and you will be certified by the state the pharmacy tech that's the same thing. You'll take your year-round course and get your certificate, take the certification exam and become a certified pharmacy tech within the state. Like you said, I did earn my CPR, my AED certification. Um, we learned cert skills in class, and your cert skills are lifting a patient, triage, and those other ne necessary things that you'll need to be successful in the Again, I took biology, I took chemistry, <laughs> like this is just so outstanding. I almost wish that I could go back in time and become a student again. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you have a lot of experiences out of the classroom, but I had the opportunity to visit your classroom recently, and you've got some really cool things within the classroom. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about the equipment that's there that the students have the opportunity to work with. Well, our students have opportunity to work with the CPR uh, mannequins where they actually learn the CPR process. Um, there's a song that they uh, use, Staying Alive, yeah, the staying alive. Uh, that gives them the timing. And it's really interesting to see the students practicing their, practicing their CPR skills. They also have the mannequin arms where they can um, practice suturing, practice taking blood, blood pressure. Uh, two really cool pieces of equipment that we just recently um, acquired are the SimRx, which is the, the medication cart that we have for patients where patients' information is logged in, what tests are being ordered, what doctors seeing them, what medications are ordered, and the students actually make up 
patients and what has happened to them so that they can order the proper medications. Um, the second piece of equipment that we're really excited about is the anatomage table, which is the virtual dissection table. And you came and saw that the other day. Which where was the students, fantastic. Yeah. Yes, the students love that. They're just fascinated with that technology and it allows them to see every layer of the body from the skin down to the skeleton. Uh, our teachers have already been using it in the classroom for for students to identify body parts, bones, um, structures, how to identify male and female from skeletal features. So it's very exciting to have that piece of equipment and our students to be able to access it. And Chloe, you're pretty much a pro on that already. <laughs> I wouldn't say a pro yet. You looked like a pro the other day. I'm I was saying you familiar. were the one that was leading the conversation yes. and really going through that. So tell us, what do you enjoy about that? My favorite part about it is um, there are different cases. Well, there are different cases in the case library on the anatomage table, so you can really go into depth. Like I said, I wanted to be a midwife or an OBGYN. So there's different. There's the fetal stages. There's ecoptic pregnancies. So there's just more than the cadavers on the machine. If you want to be a vet tech, you can look at the different animals that they have up there. So it's very resourceful for everyone in the academy. Now you made a comment about the cadavers, I mean, are those fake cadavers or are those they're, real cadavers? They're real cadavers. They donated their body to science after they passed. Um, we have two males and two females, two Caucasian and two Asian, and they all have different features. Um, one of the Asian women cadavers, she had stomach cancer. So that's really interesting. And when you go and you get into her digestive tract and you cut apart that stomach, you can see how her stomach was affected from that. Well, and you also mentioned the other day when I was in there, it wasn't just stomach cancer. After she donated, after she, you know, she donated her body to science mm -hmm. and she passed, when they went in, they actually found something else, correct? She had some form of brain cancer, yes. So that's... Which she didn't know about. She didn't know about it, no ma'am. Wow. And so you had made a comment um, to me the other day, which I thought was really interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you think that that table is more beneficial than just practicing on a cadaver sitting right there in front of you? Well, I did say that you can only cut a stomach open once. So if you Correct. do it wrong, you can't <laughs> press the button to restart like you can with the anatomage table. So that's a great thing is there aren't too many bodies to use. You don't just want to waste them. Well, when you have the anatomage table, you can start over as many times as you wish. Now, but um, looking into the future, if you had the opportunity, yes, would you work on a real cadaver? Yes. You would. I would love to. <laughs> I would love to. Very cool. Cool. So these great experiences, and now the anatomage table is very cool. Is that really one of your favorite parts? That is, we, um, we're doing a muscle unit in class right now where we learn your muscular, structure, muscular structures, and we actually use the anatomage table to get that 3D view and look at the layering of the muscles and understand how they work. It's much better than a textbook. <laughs> you think? Yeah. <laughs> we worked from textbooks, so I'm <laughs> dating myself, but we definitely yeah. worked from textbooks. And so what an opportunity. Yes. So we've talked about their certifications. We have four pathways under the Governor's Health Science um, Academy. Now, the academy starts for 10th graders. You make your decision in ninth. Yes. Yes. But we do have eighth graders that could have done the en early enrollment process. So they're kind of right there right now. Um, what else are we missing? Business partners, the opportunities, anything else you ladies would like to add? I think one of the, the great things about the Academies of Hampton is that we get to show off our academies and the successes that we've had with the academies and how they've impacted students in a positive way. Uh, our students get to do things and see things, meet people. Yes, um, we've do. had the governor, governor's wife, we've had the state superintendent, and that's something that... Ann Holton, I mean, yes. we've had lots of individuals. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's something, that's a, a part of the experience as an ambassador that our students get to, to participate in, as well as just our students walking through the hallway. You know, the governor comes into your building and you know you must be something special. Um, and we always try to make sure that all of our students know that we'll have visitors, that it's very important, you know, for Hampton and for the academies of Hampton to have these visitors. And we really do uh, like to show off what we do and the great things our students get to do. And one of the great things you get to do, I saw one of the students actually taking the superintendent's blood pressure once. So yes. there you go. <laughs> was that you? No, but oh, okay. I was there. And another great thing about the academies is that because our students are so engaged, our graduation rates are higher, our SOL scores are higher. So there truly is a difference with the academies. Can we hire you? Because you're a great advocate. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you both for joining us today. Like I said, you know, with the Academies of Hampton, it is a wonderful transformation of what's going on, you know, K through 12 in the city of Hampton. But to really sit down and talk about a specific academy and hear it from not just the principal's point of view, but a student's point of view, is just priceless. So thank yes. you both for being here. Thank, thank you, you for, for having, having us. us. And thank you for joining us on HCS Connects. In the meantime, stay connected with us. Join us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, jump over to our website, or even YouTube. Thanks and have a great day.